We're back. We're back. We just came here. There was a commercial break there, and we are back. We just have one, though. The big show is still here, obviously. The big show. Uh, and we got with us a real special show. We have a show outside of West Angeles. Quite some time. The only kids. We looked at the WWE the last uh, couple of weeks, and they just had that hand address match for zombies. And even though it's yet up for zombies, Anthony James, it's all good. I know you, you know, you might have been undead not too long ago, but we got someone here to protect us, and Father Stokes. Father Stokes, you might have been undead not too long ago, but we got someone here to protect us, and Father Stokes, Seth Gilliam. Gilliam, sorry, Seth, how's it going tonight? From The Walking Dead, of course. It's going all right. It's going all right. It's good to be with you guys. You're wearing that mess stuff, though. You know me and Joe are Boston guys, right? You know 86 still stings? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it does. But uh, I think you guys have done a lot better since 86 than we have. <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is true. Uh, yeah. Seth, how's it going tonight? I know you're, you know you're in the middle of a lot of things going on right now. Uh, everything good on that end? Everything is good on this end, yeah. I'm just trying to avoid the heat, man. It got up to like 90 degrees. Yeah, it was brutal out in Boston today. Now, you, um, you've um, you been a part of like some, other than The Walking Dead, like The Wire, Law and Order, Criminal Intent, like you got quite a resume. How did you break into acting? Um, the, uh, the college that I went to, I went to a, a, a state school, SUNY Purchase. A theater training program, and at the end of your senior year, you got to do two scenes in New York City for a gathering of casting directors and agents. In the answer. Um, and uh, I got an agent out of that, and a week after I graduated, uh, I landed my first role in Richard III with Denzel Washington playing Richard III out in the Delacour Theater in, uh, in Central Park. I was the wow. Prince Edward of Wales. Okay, yeah. so, you, so you started off small. Yeah, yeah. A <laughs> Joe, you were about to say something. Like where I first remember, where I first saw you, is Starship Troopers, and that's yeah. a that's got a cult following. That's a huge movie, got a cult following. It it was just to me, I was like, holy shit, that's a badass movie. And I started following everybody. Mm. And then when I met you first, doing that con who must not be named, you know, <laughs> in a, pre- our, a previous couple of years ago, the, when I met you, I was like, this is the guy from Starship Troopers. And I think that was when you had yet to come on the show, but you did the convention. Like you, had, yeah. you filmed, you hadn't come on, but you were at the convention. And that's when I met you. I was like, this, yeah. is, this is the guy. And then we're like, we got to hang out a little bit. And like, every, I was like, I got this is like my first glimpse of the other side of Hollywood. When I get mm-hmm. to see like the person behind the actor, like all these names you portrayed, yeah. I got to meet Seth, and I have to say, Seth, you're a hell of a guy. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. Thanks, man. Yeah, you know, I put a smile on my face every time I see you going through the convention, doing the things, the way you greeted people. You know, it it was awesome. And Damien is. He's aces. Yeah. 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 He's a, he's a great guy to work with. Because I can tell when I'm getting kind of tired and cranky and a little bitchy. And uh, he comes up and whispers just the right thing in my ear. Reminds me of, uh, of, uh, of the joy that there is to be had in life. He's one of those type of, like, you know, look on the bright side type of guys, no matter what the situation is. And um, and it is a pleasure to, to meet the fans and to, get an idea of like get some feedback on the performance. So you know, is, are things landing? Are things not landing? Is it believable? Is it unbelievable? All that kind of stuff. So I love going to the conventions for that. You know, and uh, it's pretty easy to uh, to stay up for people when we're talking about acting. You know. Yeah, is that, I remember watching not just you, seeing some of the other celebrities from the show that were there. I mean, people like Jeffrey D. Morgan, Norman Reedus, all the way down. Uh, you know, I'm 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 good buddies with Cooper, uh, and, mm-hmm. and and seeing him and some of the reactions that people and all of them, the people that like come in and they're like they can't breathe when they see you guys, and because yeah. the like the Walking Dead has such a fan follow, such a devote fan following, it's almost like yeah. they're still, but the, the walkers are coming to get you again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 
and I, I remember hearing um, not, nothing specific, but I remember hearing several times people come up and be like, you did this and you did that. And the actor would be like, yeah, yeah. And have no idea because it's so many different scenes. Yeah. Like, you guys so, so well. And I, I love it. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. And I apologize if I let that little con secret out. But I mean, that's with anybody. And, but yeah, I loved watching you interact with the younger to a younger yep. family, what you do is real yeah. you know what you do is real to the younger fan am i gone no i think, i think you guys no you're there joe i think you guys have the advantage now too like with the convention stuff like when the original con started like the original like star trek conventions i'll say started those guys were already done filming. Like the, the Star Trek series, the original series was over. You have the advantage now of actually doing these conventions and meeting the fans while you're still like not even close to being over with the series. You know what I mean? So like they're meeting the characters as yeah. the characters are still on TV. What's the craziest yeah. thing? What's the craziest thing that a fan has come up to you and been like, I seen you in this where you didn't think anyone would remember you for? Oh my! Oh my! Yeah, I did. A, I did a film called Punks uh, some years ago uh, with Patrick Ian Polk, who wrote it and directed it. And um, it was a small independent film. Uh, we went to a, a couple of festivals with it. I remember uh, in San Francisco going to a, uh, a screening of it. Um, but uh, it's not a film that I would uh, that I would imagine has Walking Dead fans watching it, you know. Okay. Um, so uh, someone came up to me and talked about that. Yeah, someone came up to me and talked about that, and I was like, "Oh, that's really cool. That's that's totally a crossover thing." And, you know, it, uh, they let me you know in essence that they were following my career. You know, it wasn't just happenstance. They were looking for things that I had been and wanted to view it, which. Uh, which, which touched me pretty, pretty, uh, pretty closely, actually. I think the Walking Dead fans, like, are they really are the new Trekkies? Like, they're the diehard fans. They're the, you know, you got so yeah. we have in Boston. There's a zombie walk every year where they all they spend probably as much time in makeup as some of the zombies on the Walking Dead, and they go out and they walk around downtown Boston yeah. and character as zombies, and it's amazing to see this. And I don't think yeah. any other show yeah. really generates that um what's it like to be a part of my knowledge how cool is it it's uh it you know it's kind of strange because when we're you know you're in it and you're mostly just seeing people that you work with for that you know for that episode uh and it's and you don't really have any idea of the the scope of um uh, you know, the, um, of people who are going to be watching what you're doing when you're just working with two other people, you know, for like a week or 10 days. So um, there was another reason why I, I like going to conventions because we kind of shoot it, you know, for ourselves, um, you know, to support the other actor who's in the scene with you or what the, uh, the director's vision for that particular moment is all about. And you're trying to, you know, you try to work with each other, uh, get to a, a happy place where you all come together on your ideas and everything else like that. But it's only like the two or three of you at the moment. So then you go to a convention and you get like hundreds of people coming up to you wanting to talk about that moment. And it's kind of surreal, you know, because it's like when I was doing it, I didn't have any, any, any concept that really anybody was going to be watching it. You know, it's the last thing you want to be thinking. Thinking about when you're shooting something is, oh, some people are going to be watching. Millions of people are going to be watching this scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not where you want to go with. Now, how did you, how did you get to become a part of The Walking Dead? Was it auditions, or was it did they come looking for you? It was auditions. I auditioned uh, for Scott Gimple out in Los Angeles. I was out in Los Angeles shooting Teen Wolf, actually, and. Um, uh, I was actually at uh, one of, like the very first conventions I'd ever done uh, was for Teen Wolf, and on the weekend, and uh, I had to 
leave my uh, my table for a while to go in to meet Scott Gable audition for The Walking Dead. I think it was like a Saturday afternoon. Um, I met for him and, and the camera person, and uh, then I got the offer for the role. Um, and six days later, I was on set. Um, I watched the whole like up until at that point, it had been four seasons. I watched all four seasons on like a Saturday. I lost it on Netflix so I could know what I was getting into. And then on that Monday, I was on set. So um, it all happened very fast. But I, I came to learn later that Scott Gimple was a big fan of The Wire. He had, um, uh, uh, oh boy, uh, uh, Kirkland were, uh, were big fans yeah. of The Wire. So, um, you know, and I, they'd seen me on that, and they had a couple of people from The Wire. So he already had an idea of what kind of what I do. You know what I mean? Right. Now, Kirkland like, wrote the – he was the one who wrote, like, the original comics and all of that. What was it like to actually yeah. work under him? Like, the, the original – not just the creator of the TV show, but the creator of the product in general. You know, it's it's interesting. You know, I asked him I asked him a few questions, and he was really open to to whatever it is that I whatever it is I was thinking. You know, it's like, well, do, is Father Gabriel uh, more of a, an apple or an orange person? Like, what do you think Father Gabriel is more like? I don't know. Apple juice. I don't know. And I'd be like, so he's apple juice. You know. So he was very he's very curious. With uh, with the characters that he created, with uh, with the world that he helped to uh, create, I think a lot of fans would agree with me when I say that you know you turn from apple juice to poison the way you kill people. Go <laughs> <laughs> now, it, it's you went from timid being the, the the priest and you know Father Gabriel to like badass Gabriel. Like I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you to look over there while I cut your head off, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and now and yeah. this is boil. You have the Father Gabriel has a like, situation with his eye going on where he's blind in the one eye, and I think that me personally, my opinion of that is that that gives you better sight. If that mm -hmm. if, if that sense, you can see more with less, you know, and, and it mm. carries. I like it. And you, I'm seeing fans at some of the other conventions that are coming in that are buying that cup, black, the white out thing for the eye and going in and, and more and more of them are becoming you be before I was like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to be the priest guy. And now they're like, no, I, I'm father yeah. Gabriel. I'm father Gabriel, you know, with the cosplay yeah. and it's become a huge mainstay and it's transcended from just the, you know, just the, the timid priest to who always carried the Bible to like when he's like, you know what? Screw it with the end of the world. Let's do what we got to do to survive for us. And that. Yeah. Speaks no. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. I, I'm, well, go ahead. I, I was going to say, is it cool to see when people come dressed up as you to these things, knowing that they spend you know, a ton of money and time? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, it's, uh, uh, aside from the eye, it's it's a fairly simple costume, you know, black, you know, shirt, jacket, pants, shoes, socks, and a white collar, which, uh, which Gabriel, like, made out of a paper plate for a little while there, I think around season 10 or 8, after he tore up by him and threw his collar in the fire uh, while he was eating gold. This is a wild show. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give Father Gabriel mad props right now. Like really, Rosita, dude. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. You know, I, I think that uh, Father Gabriel helps to bring out the nurture in Rosita. You know, because you know, he's such a troubled man. You know, struggled with his faith. And he's got the eye. You know, he's he's quote unquote handicapped. You know. In that regard, and I think uh, Rosita sees, you know, someone that she can, uh, she can help build back up. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And one more question about about you playing Father Gabriel um, in the two different roles. How hard was it you to juggle the transition from the guy that was sworn to the oath and you know did it and to become 
that I guess where I'm asking is like when that arc, when you switched, when you were going, I, I know I got to do what I got to do. I got to do what I got to do. And then you were like, you know what? The faith isn't working anymore. So I got to go and survive that. Like watching you transition as a fan was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm great. The, the mindset behind that so for you, like I, I want to climb in your mind and, and, and find that spot that created that for me. Cause it was phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, man. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of that goes to, uh, to, to the writers, you know, they, um, I think they built in enough tragedy with Gabriel that you can believe that he would have to eventually just shut the door on the kind of person that was biting all of that tragedy in and become someone else if he was to survive. Kind of like, is it the Marines who say adapt and overcome or something like that? You know, yes. it's all about survival. I think, I think, um, I think he was too full of the tragedy to keep going down that road. Because I even tried, you know, death by suicide, death by Sasha. You know, he's, you know, he was down there for a while, um, lost in, a, in his in his loss in belief and faith. So I think, um, you know, you can only go so far before that character ultimately kills themselves. You know, but uh, the writers decided that uh, this guy would do the opposite. He would close the door on that person, and you know. Invited the other side of himself to take over and like, take the lead for a while, and that's someone who's going to shoot first and ask questions later. You know. There you go, and I, that I love the new Gabriel, like the old one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're both very fun to play. You know, for very different reasons. I mean, I I really enjoyed being you know, um, the guy who just couldn't get it together for a while around a bunch of superheroes. You know, at the point we meet on Gabriel. This is all very new to him. He's been locked up in his church for like 18 months, you know. And Rick and crew have been out there hacking people's heads off, you know what I mean, uh, and living from, from spot underneath the tree to spot underneath the rock, you know what I mean, always on the move and everything else. So Gabriel was kind of like I would imagine most people would be in a, in a, you know, in a horrible kind of apocalyptic situation, and they'd be very self, you know, self-obsessed you know, and it would be not so much about looking after other people i think you know gabriel was one of those people you know gabriel and, then, and that was fun to play because he was different than he was like the, the total diametrically opposed you know to uh say daryl you know what i mean everybody wants to be daryl and imagines themselves be down with crossbow and being badass and i think a lot more people would have been like father gabriel like locked the church and so you got your own home Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Actually, Get off my lawn. Yeah. I remember watching you come out of the church for the first time. It was like you trying to walk into the into a thunderstorm of a shower in, in, at the beach, and you've never swam before. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. Even looking back, and with if you watch the whole group of you move from one like down the road, you could see them all walking, mm-hmm. and you're kind of holding your Bible and looking around, like because you didn't know what the heck was going on. But you just knew you were yeah. with these people, and they were going to protect you. And that in itself, to be the polar opposite of everybody around you, is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. It was fun. It was fun to play. Uh, it was fun to be, you know, the guy trying to catch up. But it's also been fun to play, you know, the other side of Gabriel, who uh, who is less open, you know, and is far more guarded. Yes. I touched on it earlier. Like, you were a part of a lot of other shows. Like, and I think, like, I don't know if it was as popular, but I mean, The Wire was wildly popular, too. Um, yeah, you know, was, a lot of people came to The Wire, uh, to the wire late. We had, like, a hardcore, yeah. you know, following of, of people who were just all wire all the time. But the audience didn't really grow until people started. This was before, you know, the, uh, uh, uh would, People were handing out VHS tapes of a wire. You know what I mean? Kind of yeah. like that kind of, you know, word on the street is, this is the show you should be watching, uh, following, you know, yeah. which is very True. loyal. So oh, it's such a good show. And like that whole, I mean, HBO at that point really had the chain on that type of shows where now, 
A&E's got Walking Dead, and there's other shows that are sort of edgy like that. But I think The Walking yeah. Dead is really like – I think the, the Walking Dead broke the mold and put that type of show on basic cable. Yeah. 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 I'm still amazed at the kind of stuff they can get away with on basic cable. You know right. I mean, it makes sense if you're spending twenty nine ninety nine a month, you know, signing up whatever it is these days. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's a cable where it could be seen by everybody in the family and it didn't have any, you know, no lockbox. No. And I, the, yeah, like you said, like what they get away with as far as, you know, there's some blood and there's some guts, there's some tainted meat. There's, you know, yeah. which is yeah. my favorite line <laughs> in any television episode ever. And it came out of the walking dead. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it came so, out of the walking dead. It is a good one. Oh, so many good one-liners came out of there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And a lot of them came from uh, Abraham. <laughs> you know, stuck yeah. my, stuck my nuts. You know, that... Yeah. That beca- I, My kids say that now. Like, you know, even my daughter says that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Jesus. Yeah. Do you now, or will you ever, because we are a pro wrestling podcast, sort of, were you ever a pro wrestling fan? Um, was I ever? You know, I liked uh, back in the day. I liked the epic Hulk Hogan. You know yes. what I mean? He seemed to, to understand that you know it was entertainment that goes behind all the hard work he put up in the gym and everything else and all the training that he did. You know what I mean? To get the body that he had and the athleticism that he had at that size. You know what I mean? So I like Hulk Hogan for a while. Yeah, they recently they recently had a match uh, on a pay per view where it, the ring was surrounded by zombies. Uh, <laughs> would you have been able to survive that? No. Like the the object of the match was you get thrown out of the ring, the zombies beat you up or eat you up and throw you back in. Like what would normally yeah. be a lumberjack match? It was a zombie jack match. So that yes. was, I think you'd survive. So I, what do you got to You got to beat people down to stay in the ring, right? You got to keep them getting lifted right. up and tossed out. Right? Yeah. 160 pounds. I'm coming in the first 30 seconds. So you have the high ground from the zombies. You know what I mean? The zombies are on the ground and they, they don't have brains. They can't climb into the ring. So you kind of get the high That's ground true. on them. That's true. And that, if I got the high ground, why do I want to go into them? I don't want to go into them. I want to throw somebody else into them. That's that no. yeah, project. That's what I'm saying. To them. No. I'm saying at my height and my weight, I would wind up being thrown into the zombies quite a bit. I get thrown <laughs> in, they toss me back. I get yeah. thrown in, they toss me back. Yeah, you're going up against Batista, maybe. But you go up against some of the, yeah. some of the more in the middleweight class, you'd be good. I mean, I've seen you work. You think? All right. I can. You know, yeah. you know the, it's come out years ago that it's sports entertainment, you right. know, for pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. And so so you can break that down to another level and say it's it's a form of acting. Uh, yeah. Even back, when, even back in the Hulk Hogan day. Is there. Yeah. If you, were to, if you were to create your character right now to go into the WWE ring, how do you think you would see yourself in the ring? Like, what would your persona be? I would have to be something fierce and fearless. And I would probably be like, I would take on like some kind of honey badger thing. You know, I'd be like, I'd be like the honey badger. I'd come in with a honey badger hat, you know, and I'd yeah. carry wrists. I'd plate my, my nails black to look like claws. And I would be fearless. And fast. That's what honey badgers are. I mean, honey badger doesn't, you know, I don't want to curse on your podcast. Honey, honey, the honey badger you don't give a fuck. Yeah. Give a fuck. You see the video? Honey yeah. badger will take on anything and everything. It's a fair. Oh, yeah. So you'd get in the ring with Batista as the honey badger. As a honey badger, and I'd have to go for his feet, keep around his ankles, something like that, hope to snap a, an Achilles or something, pull him down. You know, get them down on the mat that way and then go for the throat. Now, what would be the honey badger's catchphrase? 
Like he enters the ring or he's about to hit his his power move. What does the honey badger yell? I like honey badger yelling, I don't give a fuck. And then doing it. Honey badger don't give a fuck. And then leaping from the top. <laughs> oh, yeah, that actually works. You know, that, that would work. <laughs> and I, I can I say love I'm, it. I'm, I'm gonna go so we you were saying and you're gonna go after the ankles. I'm thinking your finishing move would be like an ankle throw the figure four around him. Yeah, yeah, it'd have to be something where I get him down on the ground and lock him up somehow. Honey back no, yeah. give a fuck might be the title of this episode. Honey back, you don't give a fuck. With Steph Gilligan. <laughs> you know, I'm going to talk to a friend of mine, as you know, many of the artists at the conventions, about yes. drawing that. Drawing that for you. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what the honey badger looks like. Paper. How hard is it for you to walk down the street now? It depends where I am. If I'm in New York... It's pretty easy, you know, it's my hometown and people are very much, you know, who gives a fuck who you are. Um, yeah. And so uh, New York, I can walk around pretty easily with. In Georgia, it's a little more difficult because I think, you know, around where we shoot show, people have been watching it for years. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, uh, people, the sword lines inside and out. What's that? People go from all over the country to see where it's shot, too. Like yeah. That's, a, that's yeah. now a destination. Yeah, it is. It is. So, it is. Bruce is an electric toothbrush that will change the way you think about brushing your teeth. With powerful sonic technology and ultra gentle bristles, the Bruce redefines what it means to have super clean teeth. It's like that feeling you get when you just leave the dentist. A fresh, whole mouth clean every single day. Our listeners get 15% off their total purchase with code POD15. Follow the link in the show notes and enter the code POD15 to get your exclusive discount and upgrade your oral care routine. It's, you know, the little main street in Snowy is packed every Saturday with people. If you ever want to make money, you go sit on the church steps and try to sell autographs for 50 bucks. People would buy it. People <laughs> would buy yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a retirement, right? That's your retirement fund right there. Take That's that my and... retirement fund. I'm going to hold off on that. I don't want to cash on that just yet. You know what I mean? No. i got to find a way to maximize that. You, like, there is so much left on the – like, I read the comics for The Walking Dead, so I thought the show would have ended after a couple of seasons. It, it's, mm-hmm. like, still going so strong. And what's funny yeah. is, like, the, the comic book fans who are diehard <laughs> comic book fans really stuck mm-hmm. with it, which – cool because the yeah. second you and you i'm sure you've seen this as being a part of that show the second you stray from a comic book storyline how quick they can turn on you but now that there's yeah. no comic book show by there's nothing for them to turn on you know yeah yeah it's true well, well, what, it's what true. they would say what like based on the conversation i've had with fans at the conventions what they would say is i, I don't like the way they did that they should have done it my way and this is how I would have done it. And they tell you the whole yeah. spiel. Steph, I know you've heard that. You know, I have. how I would have done it. And they go on and tell that's you, you know, play by play, they give you the breakdown. That's one of the cool things of the walk is that they've got their own alternative storylines for everybody. And they're vivid and they're detailed and they're descriptive yeah. when they you know when they share it with you. So um you know, it's not a lot of shows do that. Do they try to anticipate what will happen to people and or try to change a moment that was already shot and aired? You know what I mean? Oh, and they introduce the characters. The way they introduce characters, the way you came in in season four, like you came in a you know popular character right off the bat. You look at the way like the governor came in, super popular off the bat, and it's yeah. just uh, the way they tell the story is. So it should be Between nothing the, to get you guys. Super popular, but at the beginning, super hated. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Hated by the people. fan base. Yeah. Without an antagonist, there's no, reason, there's no reason to watch without an antagonist like that, though. Yeah, if I mean, you know. Dead. 
I, I, I didn't mind it until people started wishing me personally. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know, look, yeah, you know, if something bad happens to me, I'm sure they're going to cast somebody else to play Father Gabriel. He's going to be with you, whether it's me or somebody else. So, you know what I mean? Love we had somebody me. commenting on our Facebook uh, that she came over a few years ago from the UK to Sonoya a couple of years ago to meet you. Oh. Lisa Ann Tubbett. So, wow. like, like, people travel the world to go meet you guys. What was the yeah. point where you, you went from you? What was the point where you knew you were just like a popular a- actor at this point? Like, where you knew you were you were something, a superstar? Um, I'm still waiting for that moment, but, uh, I, right. I, 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 I guess with the fan base, it was after, uh, Father Gabriel takes baby Judith, when the walkers have overrun Alexandria and volunteers to take her to safety and takes her to, uh, to, to his, uh, his, his tiny congregation there at the, in the, in the garage that he, Put up as his church, and um, and announces that they're going out to fight for Alexandria, and that's what God has decreed. And you know, I think that was a turning point for a lot of fan base. One, it was taking care of baby Judith, which was huge, you know. And two, it was actually making a d- decisive uh, choice to fight, and not to flee. Okay. Now, Seth, I know you you have, like, a crazy schedule going on right now, and we've had you for about a half hour. Joe, I don't know if you have yeah. anything else, but I don't want to take up a lot of Seth's time. It's, I'm, I'm good whenever Seth is. And he says, guys, I'm out. That honey budget don't give him motherfucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you interact? How often, how interactive with you are your fans on, like, social media and that type of thing? Uh, I'm, I'm very interactive on my on my Facebook fan page. Um, I mean, I have an administrator who comes up with all the memes, which is just fantastic. You know, they're great at that. Um, uh, oh, this one. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and who also navigates. So I, I'm I'm technically a, I'm I'm an infant. You know what I mean? You put a keyboard in front of me, I'm going to start teething on it. It's not. I know what to really do. So I have to have uh, an administrator who, you know, who lines things up uh, for me. But I, I, I like to, uh, I like to get a, a, a personal touch on it um, because I'm asking them to watch what I do. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, so that means I can be a little uh, available, you know, to, uh, to them. And I figure it's probably a different experience than they're having with any other actor that, uh, you know, they have interactions with on social media because, because it's actually, uh, you know, it's, it's just a couple of people dealing with it. Um, I know with things starting to open back up in the crazy world we're in, like the conventions should start coming back around. Are you excited for that again? I'm excited for, uh, I, I'm so, you know, I'm always excited to talk about to talk about acting. <laughs> so if, you know, if you got a group of people around me and you know, want to talk about it, um, and they're going to pay to take my picture, that's just an added bonus. But um, I mean, I it's it's uh, it's more about trying to see whether or not what I'm doing is landing the way I intended to, you know. And the, and the uh, conventions give me great feedback. In that regard, so I miss I miss that I miss that uh, that kind of interaction uh, that I have with the people who watch what I do. So we had somebody commented on Facebook asking if you can say happy birthday to Lisa Ann Tebbett. Her birthday is next week. That's completely up to you. Happy birthday, Lisa Ann Tebbett. What kind of name is Tebbett? Looks like it's two names together. It, she, it's British. She's in London, so that's ah, probably a okay. thousand-year-old name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Now, to get back to the Facebook page, like I follow your page, I comment on. I'm a top fan, but 
yeah. the, some of the, 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 I'm going to call them gimmicks that you come up with to interact. Like, we're going to start with A. Give me your favorite song starting with A. And yeah. you go through, and that is so interactive. And that has people come out and see, oh, Seth, Father Gabriel. Oh, and I, I've heard people, I've read some of the threads of people, oh, I didn't know you did this. And they'll, they'll, and they bring in more. And then they'll yeah. bring in another brand. And it's just, it's, it's longevity. It's, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. You know, I know you have fun doing it. I know you do it out of your heart. I'm not just saying it's a, it's a, it's a ploy, but you do it because you love your fans and you want to, you want to interact. And it's just, it's yeah. great to see that. And the way you you like comment on their posts and and then I, I see yeah. I see for I can post their own thing and say oh my god Seth replied to me you know and things like <laughs> that it's just really cool yeah yeah I particularly like you know and I can't take credit for it it was a it was my administrator's idea to um to post pictures with the fans she's like you know you don't have to take yourself at these conventions. It's like you take one selfie before everybody gets there so you can see the, the difference when it's in an empty hall. And then you take one selfie when everybody's in at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon to see the difference. But, you know, it's not like uh, uh, I'm taking pictures of myself all day long. I'm taking pictures of people who are taking them away. She's like, you know, give them a chance to, uh, to see themselves with you on your page. I think it would be a cool idea. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. Because it brings us even even closer, you know, it gets people going, oh, go through their their phone, you know, their phone photos to see whether or not we got a picture, who they have a picture with, they have a picture with, and, you know, and what kind of memories I can bring back up to them. Hopefully, it's good. It seemed like a good, you know, idea all the way around. That's a yeah, and that's sort of a sales pitch too for people to pay to they pay the convention to take a picture with you. And then now mm-hmm. they're gonna take a picture with you, and they're gonna wind up on your Facebook page, possibly. You know what I mean? Right. So it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I don't mean yeah. it is just because I do know it's more than that to you. But like, how yeah. cool is that to get your picture up there, and then you can comment right under it, tag yourself, and be like, "Look, this is me with Seth from The Walking Dead." Yeah. And you tell all your friends that that you're not only on your page, you're on they're on your page, not just their own. Is how I'm trying to word that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I thought it was a great idea, and it was like, let's do it, and, you know, I, I, we put up hundreds of pictures at this point, you know what I no. mean? Has there been anybody, because I know a lot of, um, like, celebrities are fans of The Walking Dead, has there been anybody that's come up to you and, like, I'm a fan that sort of surprised you that maybe you were a fan of? Um, Dave Chappelle. Really? A fan of the show. Yeah, yeah, and he's also a friend of uh, Norman Reedus's. And Norman introduced us in um, Los Angeles when we were there for one of the premieres. Oh, he's been gushing cool. about the show, so I thought that was really cool. Awesome. That's cool. Chappelle's yeah. one of the best comedians out there, so that is yeah, 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 yeah. That's not, me, not to make sorry, it about Chappelle, Chappelle, but for me, not to make it about Chappelle, but for me, I think he picked off where where Pryor left off. He picked up. Yeah. yeah. Pryor left off. Oh yeah. Yeah. I can, you know? I can see a lot of Richard Pryor in this film. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now I get another question I have for you. This is two questions actually similar. You can't uh, count, so it might really be full. How many selfies do you think of you with people are out there? Just give me a round number. And my second question is, how many people do you think only know you as Father Gabriel? They don't uh, I, know I, Seth. They don't really yeah, know Seth. Yeah, I, I think they don't know Seth. I think I, I must have taken uh, 10,000 selfies with people. Wow. No, I mean, no, I'm going to say more because at that convention we had. At that con- oh, just on the street? Because uh, at the yeah, convention I, you we, know, know, on, every day, we had over 20,000 people a day. At some of those conventions, yeah, yeah, the line was always um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 thousands, man. I could, I, I, I don't know, maybe I, I, that over. I, can't, put, I can't put a number on it, I can't put a number on it. And that's my guesstimate, but the, the other, well, well, yeah, 60,000, it's over 100 grand, you'd say, yeah. 
I've been thinking about this in some years, and I've traveled around a lot of places doing it. It might, it might somewhere between. I would go like fifty to seventy-five thousand, but I'll take a hundred. Well, think of it. Like, um, think of it like where I was at a lot of conventions with you throughout the states, mm-hmm. in Germany, in London, mm-hmm. and we were there two or three days each place, and they were packed. Your line was nonstop. You interact well, and that brought more people in. So if at, I'd say you mm-hmm. probably did every convention, probably two to 2,000, I'll say 2,000 at it. And you've been to how many outside of the ones that I've been to? Oh boy, I've been to a bunch. Yeah. You know, Maybe a hundred thousand is right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Are there, what would you say? Cause I know out of that hundred thousand, I know probably 30 or 40,000 of those have been in the street. What are the rules? What would you say to somebody who sees you in the street but might be afraid to approach you? Um, like I know there's got person... to like obviously you need privacy too. Like if you're sitting down eating dinner at a restaurant, leave you alone yeah, until you don't stop. Yeah, you know, if, if I'm on the phone arguing with somebody, it's probably not a good idea <laughs> to come up and tell me what a big fan you are. Um, but. Aside from if I'm eating or if I'm arguing or, uh, you know, on the phone with somebody else, not arguing, uh, I'm, I'm open. I'm available. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it, it's, I'm just a person. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't have a security detail, though I know people in security. Like a call upon, should anyone mean me harm. But I don't walk around with uh, right. trying to hide in public. You know what I mean? That's yes. this person and an actor being an actor is what I do. It's not what I am. You know, it's a part of me. It's not the whole of me. So uh, right. I would say to anybody, that's 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 life. Yeah, yeah. If they wanted to say hello, just uh, just step on up. Just don't have to be while I'm eating. Or cursing somebody the fuck out on the phone. <laughs> Which would never happen, of course, right? But hold on, hold on. So if you're in the middle of a say, I don't want to say a contract negotiation, but if you're talking to a convention that's trying to like lowball you and you're cussing them out for trying to lowball you, and ten fans come up to you and ask you for a picture on the street, that might actually be good for you. Well, you mean if they were drawn to me yelling at somebody on the phone, these fans? No, like if they just went up and said, hey, that's Seth Gilliam over there. I'm going to go get a picture with them and not care that you're on the phone arguing with somebody over a contract that's trying to lowball you. And you can be like, listen, motherfucker, 10 people just came up to me on the street in the two minutes that I've been cussing you out and want a picture with me. So now you're going to pay me what I'm worth. Have to switch it over to FaceTime so that they can see. (laughs) Yeah. And I can speak to this because I've seen it happen. Not necessarily with you, but I've seen it with Norman. I've seen it with a few others that they'd be on the phone. And all they do is hold up the finger. You know, just give me a second. And they'll all wait mm-hmm. quietly. It's like, it's it's a magic wand that, like, just give me a second. Okay. Hold up the you, finger. Pay you the time. And they'll sit there and wait. And they'll, I've seen yeah. it. And it's like, holy crap. Cool. They, when I tell them to stop, but you give up that one finger and they, and they yeah. can wait patiently. All right, that's that you, you acknowledge them, then you're going to get with them. But also, people, he is a normal guy, but if he is on the phone and he doesn't put his finger up, if he waves you away and says, not right now, find him in it. You just bumped into him in the street. Chances are you're going to bump into him in the street again at some point. Wait till the next. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the bad guy and say it like that because like, I know yeah. while there's people that are afraid to approach celebrities, there's people that aren't afraid yeah. to approach celebrities. If they're sitting down in a restaurant eating dinner with their family, if, maybe if you were sitting in a bar by yourself, maybe you're approachable. Mm-hmm. If you're sitting down with like your family or maybe a female, leave them alone, guys. Yep. Yeah. You know, I'll be the bad guy and say that. Now, Seth, I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time. Do you want to tell people where they can find you online? Uh, I only have my Facebook fan page under my name. You know, it's the only thing that I have on Instagram or Twitter or 
you know, anything I, I, else. Uh, I get to jump back to after this. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, no, that's all right. So, yeah, that's my, my, my Facebook fan page. Uh, it's a picture of me in a baseball cap. There's some dude who keeps trying to to assume my identity out there because I don't have the blue check, which drives people crazy for some reason. Drives really? Crazy. I understand you can't tell who's who's real and who's not. But, um, yeah, but the, the big uh, cap you have on in your Facebook pitch is the B, red B on it, right? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. What's <laughs> that <I'm still> <laughs> 86 things. 86 <laughs> things. I'm old enough to remember. <laughs> Me too. Now, my my next question is: you you were on City on a Hill. You had a couple of yeah. I think a couple of such a good show. on a Hill. Did you film that up here in Boston? No, we filmed that in Yonkers. Really? I thought that yeah. was Boston. I thought they split that between Boston and Vancouver. I loved that show too. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know if this is certain, but they shoot like some exteriors in Boston and then shoot the series right. around Upper New York. What was it like working with Kevin Boston? It does. What's that? What was it like working with Kevin Bacon on that? Oh, I, I didn't get a chance to actually work with Kevin on that, but I did get to meet him and he knew who I was, so that was pretty exciting for me. And then I realized. That I am now no longer six degrees from Kevin Bacon. I'm a ground zero with no, Kevin Bacon. Yeah. I'm at zero. Yeah, we're, we're two degrees. Yeah, yeah right. you're <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna play the six degrees of Kevin Bacon with everybody I talked to this week now. Yeah. <laughs> Take the drinking game. That that's awesome. Like that's such a that's another show. I mean, that's showtime. But that's another show that's super edgy and yeah. just great. And like Joe, I mean, well, that's a fictional show. It's based on a mm-hmm. lot of facts. You remember a lot. Like yeah. I remember a lot of that stuff happening in Boston. The Charles Stewart, yeah. and the Ahmed Khans, and all of that stuff. Like, so yeah. while the show got fictional characters, it's very, if you've never seen Sydney on a Hill, guys, it's very. Very close to a fantastic in that time frame. It reminds me a lot of The Wire, you know, in parts. Yeah. Because of its attention to detail and also because of its its three dimensional characters. You know, Kevin Bacon is a kind of fucked up cat on that show. Hmm. But he, you know, it's he's effective. Between that and The Wire and The Walking Dead. Has there been, I know there's never been a scene that you probably said because you get paid to do these things that say, holy shit, I can't do that. But there, has there been a scene that you've had to do where you said, holy shit, we're going to get away with this? Huh. Let's see. Because, I mean, the, the... No, no, yeah, not really. I mean, uh, I, I, yeah, I believe, I believe we all we all play parts in, in putting together a TV show, and, and you know, and, and my my part is to speak the word, you know. So I'm I'm always interested in knowing what the overall story is we're trying to tell, and I just suspend my disbelief to uh, to to do it, you know. With City on a Hill, did you watch the show before you were on it? Did you get a chance to watch some of it before you were in it? And realize, like, I was on. The, I was on the first episode. I, 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 I mean, in the, in the first season, okay. I did it, and then, and then aired after I did it. So I was in the first season. So, um, what, what, no, I, 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 I get the kind of feeling about the, being like the wire from having watched it. That first season, even though it was like very, it was '90s, and it was like Charles Stewart and all of that stuff. What was it like being a part of that now, with everything going on in the world in the past year? Because that show really kind of was cutting edge as far as um, showing the racial tension that was in the police force at that point in, in the 90s mm-hmm. and um, sort of the difference between then and now with it. What was it like being a part of that? Because I think that's pretty powerful. Yeah, I didn't get to do much of the police stuff uh, uh, on, the, on the city on a hill because I was playing the, the reverend. But what one of the right. things I loved about the storyline 
was that he had to go to sex rehab because he was, you know, trying to solicit pictures and make pictures of uh, the women in his congregation. And I thought it was a very much like a Me Too type of thing, you know, yeah. that he was kind of out in his, in his, his total philanderer and uh, his hypocrite. Um, uh, and and prey on these, using his position of power to, to essentially prey on them in his church. So that seemed to me to be really current. And you know, I thought it was really kind of spot on for the for the you know the, the atmosphere around the show. Yeah, the, to, the the stuff that that show does like that, and uh, and like I said, with the racial tension stuff, and with the you know the priest listening the photos and that type of thing. I think that yeah. shows just really yeah. like shows that they have the balls to kind of like touch on that stuff yeah. and that they can do yeah. it and not offend yeah. people because they're doing it in a way that it's sort of like almost a fictional expose. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you didn't get to see any, you know, scandalous photos or anything like that. It was just all inferred in the dialogue. You know, I mean, you have to shock people with nudity uh, for nudity's sake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. Which, which I don't think, you know, which I don't think would help the story anyway. And the, no. I think the writers and the creators of that show are way too sharp to use cheap tricks like that. Now, do you watch TV outside of the? Obviously, like you're you're on TV sets most of your day, most of your week. Do you watch TV when like because? Listen, I answer phone calls for a living. I try not to talk on the phone when I'm not doing my nine to five. Like, <laughs> is it the same thing? How different is it? Uh, I have a couple of shows that I watch. I watch mostly sports news, the NFL Network, and Bar Rescue. That's pretty much, you know, uh, Bar Rescue. JP and I Bar Rescue. Back in our day. What's that? Yeah. You and I, JP, have t- tore down a few bars back in the day. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, Ocean Kai. They need rest. Yeah. <laughs> That's Joe. Unfortunately, is uh, doesn't partake anymore in that stuff. I <laughs> not unfortunately. Fortunately, I guess we'll say. Hey, I'll drive you all around. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> there's been there's been a few times where I've had a few beers with Joe where Joe hasn't. So oh, yeah. you've snuck them in for me. Well, and it's also like now I'm with an Irish punk band. And like an Irish rock band, and I don't drink, <laughs> but it's fun. You yeah, know, it, and it, it's it's like speaking of that, like the drinking, like when I was an altar boy, we stole the church wine. Do you would you say that getting back to the Walking Dead? That yeah, the, 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 the priest would have finished one. Do you think Father Gabriel, in his timidness, would maybe take a couple extra sips? You know. Um. You know, I, I, uh, I, you know, we had the the wine that uh, Father Gabriel shared with uh, Rick and crew in the church after um, uh, his his confession. Uh, I think it was chronologically in the episode, and. Uh, Gabriel was drinking from the bottle, straight from the bottle, the wine. While Rick and the other people, and he says, you know, it has to be blessed. It's, it hasn't been blessed, so it's just wine. So I think, that, you know, maybe the first night or so when he realized the world was, had fallen apart, he may have gotten nice and loopy. But I think he was <laughs> most he's kind of holding off on it for a special occasion. And, you had know, it. Rick and crew ended up being a special occasion. He had to aim when he's going for a walk. You have to aim for the head in the middle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, I know the Walking Dead fans. I know the Wire fans. I know people have sort of probably dug into your life more than it's probably comfortable sometimes. Is there something about Seth Gilliam that you think fans should know that most people don't know? Like something maybe that you're a fan of that people wouldn't know about or anything like that? Like something interesting about yourself that you don't think people realize? Oh, 
other than that Mets outfit. <laughs> yeah, Mets, Jets, Nets, Devils. That's how oh my sports. I, I like you up until two minutes. They were all minutes. underdogs. They were all underdogs. You know what I mean? I mean, we had who did we have Martin Brodeur for a while. No, we had Chico Resch. That's right. Chico Resch back in the day with the, with the Devils. Um, I love Chico. Um, I, I, I know. I mean, anything that I would want to tell, anything that I have been told already is probably something that I don't want to tell now. You know, I mean, it, it probably wouldn't, um, you know, do well to, to go and secretly a vampire or some shit like that. But know? I mean, no, but I think the sports fan and, you know, you're, it sounds like you're sort of a homer as far as, and I am myself as well with Boston, New England, and you know yeah. that type of thing. Yeah, I, that's interesting because like that's a that's a conversation starter, and like if I wanted to crap talk, I could explain to you how the Jets don't even play in New York. Dude, it takes a lot of courage to be a Jets fan. Are you kidding me? How bad this team is! If the in football season when I go outside every day with my Jets hat or my Jets jacket, do you know the kind of shit that I get? Out of New York, which is a giant town to begin with. It's horrible. It's horrible. We listen, we grew up Red Patriots fans in the eighties and nineties, so yes, understood. Yeah. It wasn't always two thousand one and two thousand four. Didn't the Patriots start giving away a free Jets t shirt when you bought the Patriots one? Because they just couldn't get rid of them. <laughs> Did they really? <laughs> no. <laughs> But I can see it happening. Uh, we got a quick question. Has <laughs> it hurt your rivalry when you get in contact? Ooh. What's what? For Lisa Ann again, does it hurt your eye when you wear the contact on the show? Oh, yes. Nah, no, it doesn't. I have a, a, a lens technician who puts it in for me, so I don't have to deal with trying to put it in, in my stuff, which, which is kind of uncomfortable. Um, mm-hmm. And the laser uh, lubricates my eye with little drops every 15 to 20 minutes to keep it sticking to my eyeball. That's the only problem with it is that it sucks up the moisture in my eye, so I can't cry out of that eye because the contact lens kind of soaks it up. Um, but uh, and that's why it has to be dropped uh, with little lubricating drops every 15 to 20 minutes. But it only uh, really is. Uh, it's only uncomfortable for the first couple of minutes that goes in. And now it's like a minute before my eye gets adjusted to having it back in. So it does. Do you, feel, I think cool. do you feel blessed being on that show? Because, like, the eye is really the only makeup you have to do, right? What's that? Because the eye is what? The only makeup you have to do for the show, really, right? Well, not the only makeup, but um, other like the normal makeup that you would do being yeah. on the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as far as like, how much time I spend, yeah. That's um because that's a huge thing. I know uh, those makeup artists are are. I think artist is probably the best word to describe some of them with what they have to do on that show. Yeah, yes. yeah. And the makeup on this show in the Walking Dead is fantastic. Man. It's fantastic. The special effects makeup, the regular makeup, it's fantastic. Now, what are the odds after a wrap, after you guys shoot the season, how good is the party yeah, when the season wraps up? The parties are good, man. The parties are good. <laughs> well, even after the after parties with some of the best of the game, too. Well, I mean, when you wrap up a season, like you guys have to know when you do a season, like season four to me and five were pretty special seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to know by the time you are done shooting that, like what you just did. You know what I mean? So I would imagine the wrap-up mm-hmm. party for the, the seasons like that are going to be something spectacular. Just the celebration. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for the crew to finally relax. You know, there's well, so many people. It's like a crew of 500 people. You know, there's so many people that go into putting this show on. You know, doing hard work in every... It's like a chain link fence. You, you know, if, if one link is down, then the, the whole fence is off. You know, so everybody is always bringing their A game every day for however many 
it's consecutive days we have to shoot the show. So by the time it comes around to the rap party, people are definitely, uh, you know, letting their letting their um, their energy out. You know what I mean? We, we saw in the prison scene what happens when the chain link fence falls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Seth, we've had, yeah. we've had you for an hour now. I don't want to take up any more right. time. Um, we, we've yeah, I got like eight messages here. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, is there anything else? I got time for one more or maybe two, one or two more questions if you got anything else. Um, I think we've hit everything. I mean, good luck on the season. I know it's going to be something awesome. Looking forward Thank to you. it. And, uh, Thank you very much. I'm waiting for the one. I'm waiting for the one episode you. I'm waiting for the one episode where that collar what? gets bloody. I want to see blood on that collar. Ooh. You know, there have been a few episodes where we've had a fingerprint of blood on the collar, and the wardrobe people love getting that fingerprint of blood on the collar. But um, <laughs> I, I don't know at this point. I don't know. They, they might as well have blood everywhere else, man. <laughs> you know, I'll say this to you because it's a show where you never know because they've done it. Good luck this season. Oh, that, that's another it selling was, thing. Yes, you thank you. Autograph the collar. Ooh. Okay. I can't wait to watch. Cool. And now, yes, I, I just I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap in JP. Seth, thank you so much for doing us the honor of coming on our little bitty podcast. Yeah. You know that talks about wrestling and 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 just whatever comes along. It, it's an honor to have you on. Uh, I, like I said, I've met you many many times. Uh, I, I've been nothing but thrilled to see you every time I saw you, and I hope to see you again in this in the near future. And all I got to say right now, if you want to say something closing before I do, go right ahead. Thanks for having me on. It was, it was fun talking to you guys. You know, Joe, I've always liked your spirit from the very first moment that I met you. So uh, this was an easy, easy choice to make. Thank you. That means a lot to me. And cool. I'm going to drop it here now and say, motherfucking honey badger out. <laughs>